So this is a video output from the new Mid Journey version 1 video model and I'm going to upscale this in Topaz Video AI. So here I am just playing the clip in Video AI, I've not done anything to it yet, just simply open the file. As you can see it's um, it's good quality already although the resolution is quite low. So I'm going to just take it out of, um, out of full screen mode here and I'm going to put a before and after kind of side by side option. and. I'm working on this, the right hand side tab here, make sure I've got that selected. So let me just stop the video playing and just put, put it on an appropriate frame so we can just judge what the um, adjustments are doing to the actual image because we know the motion's fine. So we can see in the top right hand side here it's got the output resolution which is the input resolution basically in this case because it ha we haven't changed it yet so it's quite small mid journeys the video output is quite a bit smaller than some of the other air mo models but you know it's still definitely excellent quality so we've got something to work with here so from an output resolution point of view i'm going to click on it i'm going to put custom resolution and I've got to keep the aspect ratio locked just because I don't want any kind of stretching or anything. And I'm going to prioritize, I'm going to prioritize width and I'm going to put 1080 as the width. So, and it takes the height to 1936. So not quite perfectly um, 1080p vertical, but very, very close. So this is going to look great on, you know, like um, Instagram reels, TikTok, um, TikToks, uh, YouTube Shorts, etc, etc. So you got that 9 by 16 aspect ratio. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go down to the magnification. So I'm sitting here and just put 100%. So we're looking in. Now, I've got this set here to see this blue button down here. It gives you the amount of time or in seconds that you want to render as, as a preview every time you use it. Now, I like to render it just in five frames like that. So if I click the button now, it's only going to render five frames, which I'm not actually going to play back because what I'm doing here is I'm just looking at like the visual difference between the left and the right because I know the motion's going to be fine. We're actually going to deal with that in a minute. So I just like to start off by almost treating it as an image, as like um, looking at an image editor as if you were in an image editor the before and the after. So just by choosing the default settings, it's definitely sharpened it up a bit, especially considering this is now upscaled as well. So we're going to go down and look at the AI model. Now this relates to the upscaling itself. I'm going to not talk about Starlight in this one. Proteus, it says good for most videos. It is a great all round and that's probably what I'm going to use for this. But there are tool tips here if you hover your cursor over the um, titles on this control panel, you'll get all those kind of tool tips, giving you a bit more information about them. I'm going to go down here, I'm going to put apply grain, I'm going to put a small amount of grain in there. Now, you may notice that nothing's changed, in fact it's actually gone back. What happens here is something to bear in mind, every time you change a parameter on this right hand side, as soon as you move a slider or click a button, it will knock out the preview. It will knock back the preview to the original until you re-render the preview with this blue render button. Um, and the reason I have it only on five frames is because if I had it for longer, uh, my my computer's not particularly fast, so it would just take so long. So I like working like this and just just um, just be mindful that any time you click something like that, it'll knock the preview out. So then you need to make a few more changes. And then, you know, make a few more changes, click the render button again, and just see what you've got. Just takes a couple of moments to update on mine. And you can see here I've clicked on enable parameters and it brings up some of these basic controls, fix compression, improve detail, etc. So I'm just dragging them up. In the dynamic mode, which is a default, it automatically applies things at the sort of zero point. In the background, it's automatically applied some to your image. So you're now biasing it higher than its sort of um, its own, you know, its own calculated um, application. Whereas if you go into manual mode, it will start from an absolute zero. So you won't have those, um, you won't have anything applied to the image. It starts from complete scratch almost in terms of these effects. But I quite like starting with the dynamic mode because I'm just used to it. And there's no exact science here. It's just 
I'm just having a look at like a hundred percent magnification on the image, seeing is it making it nice and sharp? Is it not make? Hopefully, it's not making it too sharp, because the um, because the edges can go a little bit crunchy if you're not careful. In fact. I think the improved detail slider is a little bit too high there. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that for the moment. What I am going to do is change the frame rate here because 24 FPS is fine. It's a good like cinematic style frame rate. I personally prefer things in 30, uh, and that's just my own personal preference. So there's no right or wrong here. You can do it 60 if you like for that really smooth kind of look, but um, I like sticking with 30 for my general use so change the frame rate to 30 and what you've got now is another ai model to choose from now don't get confused the ai model at the top here is is choosing the AI model for the upscale this is choosing the ai model for the interpolation so the change of frame rate and it's defaulted to chronos fast which is actually again it's a really good general use um, model for these kind of um, AI videos so I tend to leave it on that unless I'm not getting something um, not getting the results that I need and I just tend to leave these settings on default again unless I'm getting a problem and then HDR I'm not interested in for this stabilization motion D blur I'm not interested in those now um, you click export as but here's the thing now you need to save it somewhere so you click save and then it goes into an export queue and you can open the queue by clicking on it so you can have various uh, files here all sort of exporting you can also export them to the cloud if you've got cloud credits but um i don't really i try not to use cloud credits because they're expensive and as long as you've not got an absolutely huge clip you should be okay for these kind of images, these kind of short AI images, they are more than enough. So I'm going to click view the exported file. And here is our nicely upscaled and enhanced mid-journey video, now in 30 frames per second. I hope you enjoyed that.